nasolacrimal duct obstruction is the topic and uh, this is sometimes uh, also referred to as dacrostenosis and I think the best way to talk about this is to draw a diagram and then label all the different parts and then explain which each of these parts are doing and then take it from there so just drawing basically all the players involved here and then I'll explain what each of these do and then I'll be able to explain everything so here we go well as you can probably figure out this is of course the eye and then right above the eye you have this which is the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal gland is responsible for producing tears and then the tears flow in um, I'll use a different color orange let's say they flow in this direction of course um, the tears go to the surface of the eye and then eventually they go into these little canals and appropriately they're known as lacrimal canals there's two of them, one here and one there. And then the tears then flow down through this area. And this top area is known as the lacrimal sac. And finally we get to this part which is known as the nasolacrimal duct. Now, this topic is, of course, the obstruction of this. Either uh, a uh, obstruction or a stenosis. And what that does is it prevents the proper drainage of the tears into this area. Now, what is this area? This area is the nasal cavity. So when everything's working properly, the tears drain into the nasal cavity. If this is blocked or stenotic, for whatever reason, then the tears cannot uh, drain into the nasal cavity. So I wanted to uh, talk about this so that you understand. So the lac lacrimal glands produce tears. The tears then go from the eye surface to the lacrimal sac, then to the nasal lacrimal duct right here and into the nasal cavity now that's why a person's nose starts to run when they're crying a lot because that's where the tears are going so that is basically the anatomy involved now it can be congenital meaning the child is born with it because of some inadequate development of the nasal lacrimal duct or it can be acquired later on in life and there's many many causes of it later on in life some of them are inflammatory disorders such as sarcoidosis, Wegener's, granulomatosis. So if a person does have a nasal lacrimal duct obstruction, how will they present? Well, most commonly the clinical vignettes inf involve an infant. And most commonly you'll see that in, in a licensing exam. You'll have a baby that's tearing a lot crusting of the eyes. Sometimes there's also some purulent discharge from the eyes. And this can also lead to cases of conjunctivitis. And that's really the presenting complaints that the parent will have. A diagnosis is usually just a history and really just a clinical evaluation with a physical exam. And if it is suspected that is uh, nasolacrimal duct obstruction, fortunately the treatment is very straightforward. You just instruct the parent to do a simple massage of the nasolacrimal duct area. And um, the good news is that 90% of cases will resolve just by doing that. Now, if it's you know, usually an adult that has um, uh, this, and that's not that simple to treat. 
then they can surgically create a uh, passageway. Uh, to help drain those uh, tears and so you, you create a surgically uh, created passage from the lacrimal sac uh, to the nasal cavity but that's very rarely done but I just wanted to mention it but majority of the cases this will do the trick just a simple massage of that area will help uh, move those tears through the stenotic area of the lac nasal lacrimal duct into the nasal cavity so let's take a look at a couple vignettes. Eight week old infant is brought to have excessive tearing of the left eye on his well child with a visit. During the exam, he's found to have overflow of tears into the lower eyelid and cheek and frequent appearance of mucoid material that the mother continuously cleans away with wet gauze. The infant was born at home to a 28 year old gravity two para one healthy mother. There were no complications during the bathtub birth. Mother denied any recent vaginal infections or discharge before delivery. The child is otherwise growing and developing well and feeding on breast milk. What is the next best step? Well, this is just a very basic case of nasal lacrimal duct uh, obstruction. And conservative management, of course, is the next step. And let's see which one right here, the massage D. It's pretty much all you need to do to treat this. And finally, three month old boy is brought to the clinic by his mother because ever since the child was born he has had constant tearing from both his eyes. She tells you that when the baby wakes up in the, in the morning there is a small amount of watery discharge at the medial corner of his eyelids and that she must wipe the child's eyes multiple times throughout the day. Child is developing normal, is reaching his normal milestones. Physical exam, the baby is able to fix and follow you with either eye. Extraocular movements are full. Pupils are round and reactive. There's no relative afferent pupillary defect. Conjunctiva sclera cornea normal. There's a bit of dry crust on the medial side of the left lower lid. The most appropriate next step in management is just another clinical vignette describing the exact same thing. All you need to do is tell the mother or the father uh, to uh, just do a massage of that nasolacrimal duct area. And that would be choice C, right there.